Okay, good evening. Uh, welcome to the AC73 FM and TV uh, show. Today we are looking at the Zimbabwe I want. Or alternatively, the Zimbabwe I don't want. What kind of Zimbabwe do you want to see? I'm joined on this panel. Yeah, Miriam Mutizwa, all the way from Ontario, Canada. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, Mr. Um, and hi. I'm also joined by Dr. Shumba. Uh, good evening. Good, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mawere, and good afternoon, Miriam. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Mm. Indeed, so, indeed, it's good. It's been a long time. Eh? My apologies. I've got uh, background feedback. What's that? They're running around like horses. Huh? I'm okay. Are you? Are you, are you, can you hear us now? I can hear you, Mr. M, but Doc is in it now. Okay. All right. The, the topic is the, the Zimbabwe I don't want to see. And uh, posted on the screen is a judgment that was ended down yesterday in Zimbabwe, a Valentine's gift. Uh, this is the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs versus Wangi Colliery Company Limited. Uh, perhaps we can start with uh, Dr. Shumba. Have you been able to go through the judgment and the uh, I, I I have cited, I have I have seen the judgment, uh, and I've, I've looked at uh, aspects of it, uh, and I should have uh, conclusively analysed it by Tuesday. Uh, I, I would need to benchmark it uh, and check the various references and cases that the judge is referring to. And Miriam, have you had a chance to go through it? Hello? Hello? Yeah, have you had a I'm chance sorry, to go it, um, uh, Have you had a chance to go through the judgment? Okay, uh, maybe we can just uh, proceed. The Zimbabwe, I don't want to see. Uh, is there anything in this judgment that... Let me try another device. This is cutting in. But you carry on. Um, talk. If I, did I hear we can you hear you correctly? now. Uh, we can, we can, hear, we, we can okay. hear you now. Right. Um, go so dr Shum, perhaps you can you can uh, let's start with this uh, uh construction uh where <clears throat> the, 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 the the this matter involves a minister who issued a reconstruction order in relation to Angie colliery then approach the court as required by the law to confirm this uh, extrajudicial order. And uh, in a constitutional state, perhaps we can start there. Uh, what kind of Zimbabwe do you want to see? A constitutional state 
or an unconstitutional state. Uh, th thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mawere. <clears throat> It's, it's important for our viewers and listeners uh, to, to get a slight background. Uh, I think someone has got some serious background sound there. I think it's Miriam. Okay, go ahead. Uh, to give uh, you know some background to 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 the issue what's important is uh, for the audience to to get some background uh, as to what transpired and what led to this outcome uh, this outcome by 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 the, the High Court. Uh, pertinent is that uh, the minister issued a reconstruction order uh, against the Wange Colliery uh, Company Limited and appointed an administrator in terms of the Reconstruction Act. Uh, we shall talk about the Reconstruction Act uh, uh, standing separate to the process. The, the Act requires that the order issued by the minister be confirmed uh, by the court. Uh, and it is that confirmation that uh, was being contested in the court of law. Uh, had, had it been confirmed, it would have given operation uh, to the plunder that the minister and his cronies intend to have to vi visit the assets of Wange Colliery Company. However, it's important also to examine the nexus uh, of this uh, problem in Zimbabwe. The Reconstruction Act uh, has been in operation for over 15 years, and uh, it has carried with it uh, two other victims, and Wange Kolari being the third such victim. This act uh, should not have seen the light of day in a constitutional state such as uh, Zimbabwe should have been because of the blatant irregularities uh, that are in the Act, the contraventions that are in the Act, and the broader violations of the Constitution uh, and contradictions that arise when compared uh, with the provisions of the Companies Act and the Insolvency Act. So we have here what I term a cowboy kind of uh, act, which the minister was attempting to uh, get the court of law to confirm the order that he gave. Important to note is that in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe, only a court of law can issue an order. No individual, 
no other body can issue an order of any sort against anyone unless it is a court of law. In this instant, the Reconstruction Act provides that the minister on his own can issue an order to reconstruct any company that he deems indebted to the state in terms of the Reconstruction Act. Now, it's also important that we find out that the state uh, intends to identify itself and place itself in court in what form? Because in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe, in terms of the Reconstruction Act and any other act of law, we do not have a body or a body corporate or an entity or a subsidiary of an entity that is called the state. I, I defined earlier that the state of Zimbabwe is everything that is within the borders of Zimbabwe, including its citizenry. I also explained that the state of Zimbabwe also includes those things that are outside of Zimbabwe that represent the interest of Zimbabwe. In simpler terms, every citizen of Zimbabwe is a member of the state, compounds and aggregates to what is referred to as state. And therefore, you cannot telephone the state, you cannot visit the state, you cannot find the state, address the state, or go to the state, or locate where the state is positioned, because the collective citizenry and everything that is Zimbabwe is what is, in effect, referred to as the state. So the very fundamentals of this state indebtedness act uh, fails we've got a terrible sound coming from somewhere okay i think it was me typing okay go, go ahead yeah uh, so that is the the other thing the second thing okay. is so, so so maybe let me uh, get it to a pedestrian level uh, for for the next five minutes just pretend you are a pedestrian. I know you are not. Uh, here we are. Uh, we don't we, know who was. We don't know who was before the judge in court because there is nothing called the state that was before. Yeah, you, you have been talking about constitutionalism, the rule of And uh, uh, we want to use the facts of this matter to test whether the climate in Zimbabwe is conducive for the operation of the rule of law. Uh, here we have an act of parliament that is now 15 years old. This act of parliament permits a member of the executive branch of government to issue an order of a limiting nature, an order that has the effect of divesting and or 
for depriving a citizen of their right in relation to a company. This idea, Dr. Shumba, member of the executive being clothed with such power to issue an order, as you have stated before, is inherently unconstitutional. Is that correct? Hello? Hello? We are talking about a constitutional dispensation that allows a minister or a member of the executive, executive branch of government to issue an order that, is, that has the effect of limiting the rights of a citizen in relation to something, whether that power conferred by the minister is constitutional or not. So we seem to have a network problem with Dr. Shumba, if you are listening out there, if you are watching out there, is it the Zimbabwe you want in which a minister at the end of the executive branch of government can be clothed with the power to limit the rights inherent in any citizen? Uh, Dr. Shumba, are you back? I'm back. Uh, the, 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 this Wi-Fi is, is telling us. Okay. So that's uh, 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 the question is uh, simple. Would you want to live in a country where a minister being a member of the executive is given a discretion in terms of law to issue an order with effect is to limit the rights of citizens. Uh, well, it, 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 it is first. It is first unconstitutional uh, for for such rights to 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 exist in the first place. Uh, we, we would have to introspect and uh, look at uh, the previous uh, judgments that uh, were issued, more especially by the Constitutional uh, Court, who failed in their duty to recognize the superiority of the Constitution. Uh, but it's also important to... to put Parliament to task. Parliament must explain how such uh, an act uh, passed through the four stages. One, the uh, Parliamentary Legal Committee, which, uh, whose task is to ensure the constitutionality of a bill. And secondly, the three readings in the uh, lower house, uh, which we call the National Assembly, and uh, the reading in the Senate. Uh, that alone will show you that uh, the process that was undertaken uh, was, was highly compromised. And, uh, of course, the authors of this act, including uh, one who was leader of the House at the time, the Minister of Justice, uh, uh, Minister Chinamasa, who was the leader of the House in Parliament, ensured that uh, Parliament uh, would uh, uh, ascend uh, to the partisan uh, uh, wish of the authors uh, and uh, compromise the nation state of Zimbabwe. Uh, such criminality. Uh, we're, we're is by, by, I think we are joined by Mike uh, uh, 
Is that Mike there? Yeah, that's me. I'm here. Yeah, can you hear me? How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm just uh, listening in. How are you? Are you How are you, Doctor? How are you doing? I'm I'm doing fine, Mike. Uh, I I can't see you, but I'm assuming you're a handsome man from your your the sound of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Yes, uh, you you, no, you, you can blessed. imagine we, we are we are we are while we are blessed we we we, we have a diabolical uh, 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 color colors uh, government that is presiding over the nation of Zimbabwe in terms of. Uh, uh, expropriating uh, assets of private and public entities for the purposes of enriching uh, uh, the few uh, that are in power and are able to manipulate all processes, including court processes and uh, other constitutional processes for uh, personal uh, benefit. So uh, basically, it's it's important that, uh, as I stated earlier, that only in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe, only a court of law can issue an order and not the Minister of Justice. Secondly, okay. and the are, you, are you following? I am, I am, yes, I'm listening. Okay. The Reconstruction, the Reconstruction Act is no space, purpose, or need to exist because what it seeks to address is already covered by the Companies Act and the Insolvency Act. So the role of the Reconstruction Act is clearly one that was ill-conceived with an agenda other than one uh, that would have enriched the uh, corporate governance uh, of Zimbabwe. Thirdly, okay. the powers that once a minister uh, 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 places an order of reconstruction on an entity, the powers that it gives the administrator that he singularly appoints are uh, unheard of and clearly driven by diabolical intents because the administrator elbows out a board of directors of that entity and dislocates that entity from its shareholders. The so, administrator uh, also uh, takes over the rights of creditors. In other words, creditors have no rights to monies that they are owed because the Reconstruction Act uh, only gives them remedy at the pleasure of the administrator and it amounts that the administrator will singularly deem fit and appropriate. It also negates the rights of employees and gives power to the administrator to basically asset strip those entities and uh, form uh, extra structures without being answerable to anybody and come up with a, a, a net summary of a reconstructed company which may be handed over to its original owners or which may be denied as in the case of uh, SMM. You are going to see a litany of these irregularities uh, 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 being well amplified on the SMM case and on the Air Zimbabwe case, where while Air Zimbabwe is under reconstruction, they appoint Chinamasa as chairman uh, of a reconstructed company, when in terms of the Reconstruction Act, there is no board, only to wake up and they've created a parallel entity to take over the services of uh, Air Zimbabwe while negating the first right uh, of claims of creditors to 
their monies in terms of the Companies Act. Now, when a company is being instituted, a company can only be instituted and established in terms of the Companies Act. The Reconstruction Act does not establish a company. Now, you cannot give birth to something and then you are wished away, is what the Reconstruction Act uh, seeks to do uh, if allowed to subsist. Therefore, Judge Mangota shouldn't have entertained the minister's application to him to confirm an order of reconstructing Wange Kolari because there was no legal standing upon which the minister would have confirmed that order or issued that order in the first place because he is not a court of law and he could not have issued an order that he now sought to be confirmed by the courts. Interestingly, in terms of the Reconstruction Act, the duty of the High Court is not to preside over the minister's application for confirmation. Okay. The duty of the court is not to preside over the minister's application for confirmation because there is no provision for that. The Reconstruction Act says the court shall confirm. In other words, Judge Mangota should, simply should have stamped the, the, the minister's application and granted it in terms of the Reconstruction Act. By okay. questioning the minister... Uh, by questioning the minister about the legality of the process he had undertaken, Judge Mangota should have gone the full stretch of the law to question the very locus that brings the minister to court to seek a confirmation of an order that wasn't granted by a court of law. That okay. would have located the tenants of the Reconstruction Act and its contraventions to the Constitution of Zimbabwe. That those are the broader, broader issues that I thought I could set out to, to allow our viewers to, to follow. Okay, we have one such viewer. Uh, Mike, uh, have you followed what Dr. Shumba has been saying? Yes, I have. I have, I have indeed, yes, yes. yes um, okay, so if you were to yeah. summarize what he has said, what would be your summary? My summary from his narrative. Yeah. From his narrative, he's saying, you know, we've got ministers who, a, a certain individual who's who's overruled, you know, and taken um, uh, um, issues to their own hand to award something that is supposed to be done through a board in Zimbabwe in order to benefit those that are the interested party parties around him basically is that right so if, if we take the the theme of tonight the Zimbabwe I don't want to be part of uh, this Zimbabwe is what Dr. Chumba was referring to that uh, in the United Kingdom there is the judiciary, there is the, uh, the legislature, and there is the executive led by Prime Minister Johnson. Yes. And in this uh, case, instant case, a law exists in Zimbabwe and operates in Zimbabwe that permits a minister in the cabinet just that has just been appointed by Prime Minister Johnson to issue an order. You know what an order is, Mike? Yes. Okay. Perhaps you can tell our listeners what is an order. 
an order. I think from from um, just from a, 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 someone who's um, to, to make it simple, an order is something that is carried forward. It's an act of action. So what, what you know, once you're carrying an order, it means you can execute anything because it gives you power to to do that. Okay, uh, uh, Doctor Shimbo, do you want to speak? Uh, 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 Mike is correct. Uh, 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 an order is a directive, uh, a legal directive, by a court of law, permitting a certain process to be legally undertaken. Whether. It, it, I, 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 that is in respect of uh, a, a marriage, it could be one that dissolves a marriage. It could be an order to put a company in insolvency. It could be an order uh, to declare an election. An election. An election. It could be an order to declare an election irregular. So it's basically a decision. Uh, of court that has to be uh, uh, abided to, and it gives direction on what it intends to achieve. So That's if it. I order that, you you must serve three months in prison. It means that this is a decision by that competent authority to limit your rights. Indeed. It is by that, that order. Is, it is by that order that allows the individual who's who's awarding whatever they are awarding, you know, gives them that authority to award whatever they award. That three months has been awarded because this individual holds the authority to do that via an order. No, it's a yes. it will be punishment or a decision. Either way, we go to court to seek an order. Yes. We don't go to government, the executive, to seek an order. Indeed. Uh, it's provided for in the Constitution that only a court of law can issue orders. Now, right. so, okay, do we, you now understand? We, now, we now have the Reconstruction Act that says a minister can issue orders. So clearly the Reconstruction Act, on that single point, it's in violation of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. And therefore, on that basis, it's a void, voidable piece of legislation. Okay. So, Mike, my, do, my, you my, oh. do you understand why, why it is important to link it to the Zimbabwe you want? You can tell from Dr. Shumba's uh, uh, analysis that he is opposed to anything that offends the Constitution. The Constitution, yes. only the court can issue orders of a limiting nature. Yet, a law exists and is being enforced under the new dispensation that permits the opposite. Here is the problem. The Zimbabwe we want, I'm sure the Zimbabwe Dr. Shumba is articulating right now. There is no one else within that parliament who can question that. That is the sad side of things. Because what is right should be right. Whether, whether you know, those who are in government now like it or not. Law is but, law. But Mike, yeah? did you know that a law of this nature exists? I've heard of it, that um, you know, but not in briefing the way Dr. Shumba has put it across. So this is your first time to learn. Yes. So let's sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have already said blind, the amazing was, 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 was blind, but now was I see. Was blind, but, but now I see. Yeah, <laughs> but don't 
but it's, it's important, uh, it's important, Mr. Mawere, if you may let me come in. Yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike raises a very important uh, question. Yeah. Uh, indeed, the, for this act to have become law, it had to go through uh, the legislature and um, yes. yes, parliament. And, and of course, uh, the first port of call is the parliamentary legal committee, uh, which is, has always been chaired by ZANU-PF to ensure that a partisan position is upheld. Uh, that and the very fact that uh, ZANU-PF has held the majority in, in the houses, uh, the, 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 the MPs would be whipped into line along party lines and vote for an illegality. Your point is, do we have the caliber of MPs who could refuse to do something illegal? I, 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 I not under the current ZANU-PF structure. They are all very partisan. They, are, they all suck up to their master. Uh, we have MPs that were there what before. If, that took... what, if, what if Dr. Shumba, what if they don't know the tenants? That's of... a very good question, that. That is a very, Dr. Shumba, I don't, you really need to take that, uh, what Mr. Mawere has just said seriously also on that point. It, know, it's important. People, and I, agree, think, I agree. Yes. I agree. I agree with you because I was in parliament. And, and, and of course, uh, there was dial, daylight uh, between a number of us there at the time I was a legislator. And, and that, that also goes uh, in terms of our electoral act, in that sometimes uh, you elect people that are not cut for, for the job purely because they are, uh, you know, qualify in one way or the other. So... Normally, it's not about qualitativeness all the time. Uh, sometimes it's about quantity. And uh, these are some of the porous uh, issues that then go through where voters don't know that the person they're electing is going to be introspecting on critical issues. And uh, they will vote him in because he's bought them beer, he's bought them... Mez is a thug and has been able to threaten people or bribe people. So we, we do get a lot of these uh, leakages of uh, uh, voidness in terms of intellectual uh, capacity. But be that as it may, it is yeah, yeah, up, so to, the, it is up so, to the individual. It is up to the individual MP to decide what to, what to do. Uh, can, can you hold on, please? All right. And uh, see, uh, Mike, are the, you learning something? Every day is a learning day, Mr. Mawere. Every okay. day we learn something, you know. And uh, and the things that we learn... No, no, the, thing that, the thing that I learn. I learn. All right. Okay, I'll bring it back. The things that I'm learning every day. Uh, always hello. link up. Always, yeah, no. This is back. You know, there's yeah. always um something new I'm learning every day. You know, even with the political circles um in no, Zimbabwe. No, this, how... no, no, on this platform tonight. Yes. Is there anything are you learning tonight? Yes, yes, I'm learning. Yes, and uh, okay. you know, it's it's good. It's good for us to it was a mind that is that is not open to learning. You know, doesn't grow in terms of wisdom. Okay, so let's so uh, let's, look at, open to let, let's look at what kind of Zimbabwe we want to see, and Mike. Uh, assume that parliamentarians are human beings like you and you are singing amazing grace. Yes. But we, we have not brought some of these MPs to truly understand the implications of uh, this law and the consequences of this judgment. 
So I ask uh, Dr. Shumba, when you look at this judgment, at the end of it, what is the order that the, the judge is, say, is given? Very important to ask, yes. What is yeah, his it, final it, 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 Kindly, kindly read it to us verbatim for the uh, benefit of our viewers, uh, Mr. Mawere. All right, so let's go to the end. Yeah, this is his signature. He says, okay, the, minister, the minister, in my considered view, failed to prove his case on a balance of probabilities. The application which he filed cannot therefore stand it is accordingly dismissed with costs. Let's go a bit, a bit more on the top. That was the final, okay. final say. Yeah, I wanted to build, build to the, the building to the judgment. No, uh, the Lord is no provision for judge dismissing. Did you know that? Yeah, no, no, Mr. Mawere. Yes, I mentioned it earlier, Mr. Mawere. I think the question Mike is asking is 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 the 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 the, 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 the learned judge is ruled that the minister, in 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 his considered view, failed to prove his case. Indeed, the minister. What, what? I would like to go on if you allow me. Indeed, okay. the minister failed to prove his case in his considered view. The other view that the judge has failed to recognize is that in terms of the Reconstruction Act, the judge is not supposed to have a, re a considered view <laughs> the judge is simply supposed to confirm the order. Mike, do you, that is, do you get that, that point? That is, that, is, that is what is no. provided for in the Reconstruction Act, that the, 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 minister, the court shall the confirm. Minister, the minister is uh, not uh, the proof. The, but but the, the, you see, the thing is, what we have to understand is, I think from, my, from what, I have, what I've understood now, is judges do not make law so the judge did not make this law and the judges actually ruled that the minister could not prove anything under this law so we have to also respect the judiciary itself in, in the fact that all they are doing is applying the law that has been given through the legislation whether because with democracy i see majority of the time is democracy we want to speak democracy and interpret it in our own way no 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 now you, are, you, are, you are compounding mike we are talking to you okay Dr. okay sometimes mr mawere I, I think i understand mike very well and 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 mike is very right that the judge did not make the reconstruction act and he's supposed to no, rule in didn't. terms of it yeah, I agree with you. But even on the basis of that act, his ruling is wrong, it's objectionable, and on appeal, it will fail because all that the act requires of him is a confirmation. That's right. Now, who is the right person? Let's go to I wanted, Mike. I, want, I, wanted, I wanted to go back, Mr. Mawere, before we, we, we leave this particular point. And say to Mike, yeah. And say and say to Mike, you are right that we've got to respect the judges. But here is the issue that the court should have looked at: the minute the minister filed his papers, the judge should have looked at his papers whether his papers were legally before him. And the judge must know and ought to know that the supreme law of the land is the constitution of Zimbabwe and not the Reconstruction Act. Aha. And therefore, no. the, judge, the judge ought to know that a minister cannot 
give an order. And if the minister cannot give an order in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe and that the preserve of that are properly constituted, a properly constituted court, the, mini, the, the judge should not have entertained this matter and should have dismissed it for want of constitutionality. But how has the government, how has the parliament of Zimbabwe and the government of Zimbabwe tie in this law to the constitution? Have they yet, you know, in what line were they amending through the constitution? Have they not lined it up with our constitution for it to be awarded no. as an order? No, they, 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 they have not. I, I was in parliament and uh, uh, it is this act that caused uh, uh, me to be fired from parliament because I raised the issue of the constitutionality uh, of this uh, reconstruction order and the expropriation and thievery that was taking place by the cronies that uh, set up uh, uh, this particular act. And so I am saying, I am saying that whether or not we have an illegal Hello? 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 I think he seems to have gone. Okay, uh, so uh, have you learned something further? Muted, My... I think. Have you learned something further? Hello? Hey, Mike. Mr. Mawere. Have uh, you learned uh, something further? Hello, Mike. Uh, I was saying the court of law yeah. is able to strike down this act. Where the judiciary yes. is a court is, is, is negating its responsibility to act constitutionally. Okay. I get, I do hear your point, and I and I do. It's a valid point because you know it, it is not standing alongside our constitution, right? And I yes. do appreciate that. So, from where it stands right now, where further can we take this matter in order for it to be resolved? Because it does not mean that because if he is given that judgment, and that judgment can be challenged, you know, because he's applied the law but it's not applied the constitution. So who else can we take this matter to in order for it to be heard? Uh, obviously, this matter will be taken on appeal to the Supreme Court. However, yes. the, 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 there are other judgments uh, of the uh, Constitutional Court uh, that were issued by the Constitutional Court where it turned a blind eye on the national constitution and it tried to appease the authors of this act and it became an extension of the captured process. This is what uh, uh, I've stated, that our judiciary is captured and uh, it sings uh, for its supper depending on uh, who it wants to appease. You will find that we... in the in the no. whole world, uh, outside of a war zone, you will not find an act of this nature in existence in any civilized society, because its job is to expropriate and legally steal from owners of capital, and uh, negate every manner and shape of uh, constitutional and corporate governance processes. Yeah. I raised see, this you, issue in you, Parliament. You, you, I, my, yes. I, I want to mention this. I raised this issue in mm -hmm. Parliament. I'm on record to have raised this in the full House and at committee level, because I chaired the, 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 the Minds and Energy uh, yes. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Portfolio Committee of Parliament. And it is for this reason, for raising those issues, that I was fired from parliament. You must remember 
I that, do remember uh, that. Uh, 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 I was in parliament on a ZANU PF ticket, but I was never partisan. I dealt with issues in the most legal and professional manner. I was the only ZANU PF legislature at the time who also voted against the first constitutional amendment because it was clearly one meant to capture the what? The judiciary. So parliamentarians have got powers of exercising their right professionally, constitutionally, and to serve the people that elected them and not to serve a partisan cause. But the, the democracy, you know, if, you know, in, in a democracy, it does not mean that we have to award or write everything in, in, in favorable of the opposition, does it? Or in favorable of other people that see differently. You know, because what we have to say to ourselves as a people is to educate the people that, you know, when you vote, they have to vote right. Yeah. Because, it, yes. it, 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 like I, you I, said, everything is done on the partisans. Yeah, because if you take, for, for example, what has just happened in America, you know, with the impeachment, with the lower house and the Democrats and the, the Republicans, they could not even entertain what Trump um, had done. And they had the law to support them with that. Despite all the leading evidence to what has gone on, but they could apply law to dismiss the case. And it, it, is, it is standing yeah. and it stood. So it is, it is within Zimbabwe itself and those around who can interpret things to this level of, of, of thought and the way you've articulated it. Because you know it very well. Unless yourself again rise up to take this feather no one else will come in and do that because at the moment no one has challenged it there's a parliament sitting right now in zimbabwe is that not right uh, 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 yes uh, uh, there is we have a yes. parliament in zimbabwe there is. have as anyone there is a parliament right whether we whether we we say we, we like them or not, but they were elected by the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But how then do they go on and challenge things that they don't understand and cannot even articulate? That is the problem. Yeah, we, when, we, when, we've when, got we've we've got a lot of parliamentary support services organizations that. Uh, uh, bring scrutiny uh, on the various acts. We've got people like the Transparency International. Uh, we've got people like uh, the Environmental Lawyers Association. These all try to enrich parliamentary processes. Uh, what is important is the individual willpower of each legislature to stand by the truth and by the constitution uh, 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 which they took us on and to ensure the subsistence of that. Our problem is that the majority uh, party negates its constitutional obligations and uh, it, it, it looks more at the benefits of uh, the cronies that support it uh, in order to, to move forward. Now, this law is very offensive in that it was enacted as a means of punishing certain people and expropriate uh, assets uh, of private individuals and uh, public uh, entities. Uh, I'm going for... to ask you this question, Doctor. I'm going to sorry, sorry to interject. You know, um, are you saying this law is not benefiting even the minor in terms of in, in relation to what you've articulated right now? Opposition no, it doesn't. In the parliament no, it doesn't. Are you because we already, if they... we, we already have the Companies Act and the Insolvency Act. What this act seeks to do is already covered in those acts. There's nothing magical about what it is bringing. We've got a law that says when you are when you are owed money, you go to court and you you you, you the court rules on who is indebted to who. It gives an order. So why we should saying, this... 
Why should this Are law saying... come and say in debt, state indebtedness? What is the state? It doesn't even define what is the state because a state is not an entity. And the state never lends we... to anybody. Are we saying that in parliament right now, there is no members of parliament or people who sit in the Congress from the opposition side who can act, who are not affected by this law and cannot see this law in any way, shape, the, or form? Most, most of them do see it, but it doesn't save their party. You're breaking away. Hello. So, uh, 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 since it doesn't serve their partisan interest to pursue it, I, 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 I don't, no, 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 no opposition legislator is energized to, to pursue it. So as we uh, come to the end of the show, I, I was hoping Mike would sing Amazing Grace because the, the point that is made uh, is that uh, uh, of uh, the difference between confirmation and determination. And uh, when you confirm what is your duty? That's right. When you confirm, what is the duty of confirmation? The minister did not have a right to introspect, determine, or look at aspects of whether the, 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 um, the, the judge, or look at aspects of whether the minister uh, had made this case or not. Because this task was simply to confirm in terms of the Reconstruction Act. So, uh, Dr. Shumba, thank you for summarizing. Uh, maybe to Mike, confirmation means something else. <coughs> what does confirmation mean what Dr. Shumba said? I think in terms of everything, because it's like I said, it's a learning day. I've learned a lot today. We, no, we, I'm, I'm just saying, when you confirm, something mm. you're confirming the confirm confirmation is acknowledgement of something that you did not know or it is it is given um you can you can say to yourself i've learned something and then you're confirming that you've learned something so you can articulate yeah, the fact you that you signed the confirmatory affidavit to confirm something yes i have uh, many yes mm -hmm. so what is your that duty is by your right duty? When I bring an affidavit, I sign, and then you confirm. Yes, that is everything it's that is made is true. That's right. And everything that you've said is true. So that's confirmation. So, so what is the duty of the judge? Whose role is reserved so, confirmation? Th thank you very much, uh, Mike. I, I have to leave you. Dr. Shumba, many thanks, many thanks for, um, for, for, for the enlightenment. But I think this war is yours, Dr. Shumba. Is it uh, true, eh? You are not ready to sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, but uh, what we have to say to ourselves, uh, Dr. Shumba, uh, before you go, before you go, yeah. Dr. Shumba, is yeah. to say to ourselves, be, 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 besides, I know you're a political man and you know you've got a political party and I love your drive for a for better Zimbabwe. But besides that, be, besides the politics side, you have articulated this because you understand it best. You have articulated this and then you're saying we don't want this to happen in your name, in our name. You are the person who is supposed to take this forward, whether you are sitting in parliament or not, because you said there's a next stage that this can be challenged, which is the Supreme Court. So it needs to get there so that we exhaust all the processes given in Zimbabwe to say, look, we tried, Dr. Shumba tried. Yes, you have traveled your journeys back in Zimbabwe through parliament. Yes, you were chased away from parliament because of your standing and your moral ground, you know, but 
let's finish this story mm. by taking it further because you understand it better than anyone else. I, I agree with you, and I have taken it. Uh, I, 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 first, I want to explain to you that uh, 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 the, the, the minister can take this matter to the Supreme Court on appeal, uh, and its outcome is predictable because it's in the act, unless the act itself is challenged uh, by the discovery of additional documents uh, from the respondents. However, uh, uh, this matter I, I have taken to the Constitutional Court before. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have discussed this matter and I have stated that uh, this matter is at the center of the capture of Zimbabwe. I took it to the Constitutional Court uh, on appeal. Uh, it was also uh, documents and uh, the, the focus of uh, my, my, my electoral appeal in the Constitutional Court. If you recall, I, I was there and uh, appeared for myself. I yes, also yes. took this matter when we were invited to Poland, you know, the circus that I refused to participate. And I stated it directly to, to, to President Munangagwa that he is in violation of the Constitution by his continued negation of his constitutional duty to scrap this illegal uh, uh, act. So I have taken it to the president officially in the presence of many people. Other witnesses who were there include Maduku, uh, Kosana Moyo, No Manika, and others. Uh, and uh, we walked away from the circus because we said we're not going to be part of this compromised process. As of now, but, what, is, what has but, transpired but, now, what has transpired mm -hmm. now will require the current litigants to walk this smile to the end. But once that process is exhausted, we are able to pick up issues and, and highlight uh, what ought to be done uh, in the next phase, which I don't want to preempt at this stage, at the constitutional level. Of particular so interest, is, I, would, I would also cite the Parliament of Zimbabwe for, you know, uh, failure to adhere to constitutional tenets and uh, allowing a, an illegal or unconstitutional act to sell through Parliament, uh, 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 as well as uh, uh, highlight the constitutional violations to the constitutional court. But you see, the net effect is, is the captured process uh, not going to repeat itself? Yes, I think, it I may, think, I think, but we'll still, I think, we'll still put the fight, we'll still put the fight to, 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 to the constitutional court, irregardless of any uh, shameful outcome that may come out. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I, I suppose you have to allow me. I'm, 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 I'm somewhere in the Indian Ocean. You, you've got to allow me to, to, to it's about midnight now, to, to, to try and uh, pray and then rest. And, uh, That's right. So uh, I think, thank you very much. For on me. another chapter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mawe. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, and thank you, Mike. And uh, uh, the debate must continue. And uh, Mike, uh, the idea of confirmation and uh, determination. Uh, Mike, can you hear me? Oh, no. Mike, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mike. Thank you very much.